Hey guys, it's DJ Over BHA here bringing you a new video. So, the great folks over at Amcrest have sent me over one of their new 5 megapixel PoE IP cameras to show you guys. This thing looks pretty cool, uh, so we're going to dive right in, see what all we can do with it. So, my plan today is to try to get that Amcrest camera added to my Hit Vision MVR. Theoretically, it should work using OnVIF. We're going to try to power it with that MVR and see if we can't get it added in there using OnVIF and see how well it works. Here we go. All right, so you can pick this thing up on Amcrest website for about 85 bucks. Uh, that's a little bit on the high end. If you head over to Amazon, you can get it for about 70, which is a much better deal. So obviously, if you're interested in this camera, you're probably going to want to pick it up on Amazon. Nonetheless, without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so we are looking at the Amcrest 5 megapixel PoE IP camera here. Uh, they definitely have good marketing on the outside of the box, so you can see all the specs. Uh, and capabilities of the camera as well as everything that is going to be coming in the box uh, but let's get this thing opened up here uh, right there on the top we got a, a sticker uh, mounting template uh, for getting those holes drilled if you needed to for a new installation uh, we got the instructions on how to get this uh, camera set up and configured Uh, let's see, we got mounting screws and of course the waterproof boot for that network PoE cable. Uh, but other than all of that, we've got the camera itself. So let's get this plastic off here. And uh, here it is. This camera feels really solid too i mean it's definitely got some weight to it i like it on the bottom is where that sd card slot is uh, if you want to use sd card for local storage uh, but that's basically everything that comes in the box uh, so let's take a look at the specs here. It has a 129 degree viewing angle. Uh, we already talked about it being five megapixel. Uh, there's not as much info listed here as I wanted, but it does do color night vision and it also has smart motion detection. So like human or vehicle detection, it does all that. Uh, it will take up to a 256 gig SD card uh, in that SD card slot that's uh, on the bottom of the camera. But that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step and we'll get this thing installed. So the plan is to install this camera on the front of my house. Uh, it's replacing a LaVue camera that I currently have installed. It will cover pretty much the whole area of the front side of the house here. You can kind of see it should have a pretty decent uh, coverage for this camera I think should be an easy install basically we're just going to pull this old camera out and since we already have the network line ran for the PoE should be able to just plug the new one in and mount it and we would be good to go so here you can see the camera is removed all we need to do now is just uh, plug in the new camera and get it mounted we should be good to go Here we are in the last clip. We have it uh, plugged in, it's mounted. Everything looks good. And once we get it online, uh, we should be able to adjust the angle and the viewing and stuff as we need to. But let's go ahead and move on to the next step and we will get this thing online. All right, so to get this thing on our local network uh, and online is kind of our next step. Uh, so once we have it up and running, we should be able to access it by going to its IP address in a web browser. The default username and password 
uh, 4M Crest uh, cameras is admin admin. So here we are, we're logged in. We can see the camera view. The angle isn't too bad. Looks like we maybe could shift it over just a little bit. Uh, but as you can see up here in the corner, looks like we are currently viewing the main stream, but you have the ability to look at the sub streams uh, for the camera as well. Uh, there's also links uh, up in the middle there uh, towards the top for viewing uh, playback. So if you wanted to view uh, recordings or something like that, you could. And then, of course, if you're using cloud storage, you have the ability to view those as well. Uh, there are also three buttons on the right. Uh, looks like one turns on the light that is built into the camera. The next one takes a snapshot um, of the current uh, view if you wanted to. And then that third button enables the audio so you could hear uh, the sound and stuff that's uh, associated with that video. Now, if we click on setup there, uh, we can go into the settings side of the interface. Here at the top, we have our image adjustments. If we wanted to or need to, I think we can leave it default for now. We uh, can also create profiles, so you can actually have different image settings for daytime uh, versus nighttime uh, if you needed to. Now, if you click on video, you can see that we can make separate adjustments for both the mainstream and the substream, so that's pretty cool. As you can see, you can get pretty uh, granular. Uh, with your changes and stuff that you want to be able to make to the camera. Uh, there's a tab for snapshot. Let's see, uh, we got overlay here, which allows us to uh, change the time format if we wanted to, that's gonna be displayed on the camera. Uh, we also have the ability to change the name, which is where I did that here. Uh, I called it front two, because it is the second camera that covers the front side of my house. Under the audio section, we can adjust the encoding for the video for either stream, and you can actually do it separately, so that's kind of nice. Everything is working pretty good at the moment, so I'm gonna leave most of these settings the default. Uh, now under network settings, this is where we can make adjustments to uh, the IP address or uh, ports and stuff like that for the uh, network access of the camera. And as you just kind of scroll through these, we even have uh, the ability to set up SMTP notifications. So if you wanted to get email alerts, um, this is where you would do that. And you can see they have um, some of the uh, top public email services kind of set up with default settings there. So you can select one of those if that's what you want to use. Uh, if you were using HTTPS, we can upload a cert here to make sure everything is secure. Now under events, this is where we can make adjustments to the standard motion detection, as well as the smart motion detection, like a human or a car detection. And so that's pretty nice. Um, under storage, we can make adjustments to the local SD card uh, storage or even the cloud storage, uh, if we have that set up. Now, I'm gonna be adding this camera to my NVR, so I'm not really worried about setting up any kind of storage local on the camera itself. Um, now, under system is where we can make changes to the, like, the date and time if we need to, as well as perform maintenance. Um, now, one thing you wanna take note of, um, you have the ability to reboot the camera from the web interface if you go under auto maintain. So there's actually a button there that says manual reboot, and that's where you can actually reboot the camera from the web interface. Of course, we have the ability to do firmware updates both manually, and you can actually have the camera go out and uh, look for the current uh, firmware and see if it needs to be updated. Um, you also have the ability to take a look at the logs. So of course, if you're having issues with the camera, maybe you're, uh, something's not working properly, you could go in here, look at the logs and make sure that you're not getting any kind of errors that uh, might help you troubleshoot the issue. But that's pretty much it as far as the web interface goes. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is kind of the main focus for this video. We're gonna get this Amcrest camera added to my LeView Hikvision MBR. So now we are ready to add this Amcrest camera to our LeView Hikvision MBR. Now it's actually not that hard to do. The Amcrest camera supports OnViv. 
Our MVR supports cameras being added to it via OnViv. Uh, so it's really just as easy as knowing the IP address uh, and the username and password for the camera. So as you can see here, we are in the uh, configuration page under uh, camera management uh, here on the MVR. Uh, we actually have our Amcrest camera plugged into port six on our MVR. So um, the MVR is actually powering it over PoE and everything. So it works out pretty well. We know the IP address is 192.168.254.7 because we have already accessed it. Uh, so now all we need to do is uh, you want to make sure that you have the protocol set to OnViv. Uh, you got to make sure that you have it set to manual, not plug and play, so that you can actually modify all the fields. We can type in the username and password of the camera here. Make sure we have selected port 80, since that's the port it's using for its OnViv traffic. And then all we got to do is save it. And if all goes uh, as it should, you should see this camera show connected um, here in the management page. Now, obviously we already had ours connected, so it already did show that, but that's what you'd be waiting for once you put in all the information. So we can go back to the actual live screen here and see the live feed for the camera. And voila, we're good to go. You can see uh, the camera. It's got a pretty decent quality view here uh, in the MVR. It's as easy as that. Let's go ahead and move on to the last step and I'll show you some actual footage recorded from the MVR, both daytime and nighttime, and I'll kind of give you my final thoughts. All right, so for stars here uh, is some nighttime footage, and it looks pretty good. I mean, this is a five megapixel camera, uh, looks like I probably should probably still shift that camera over just a little bit to pull it off that wall a little more. Um, I'll get a little bit, uh, more viewing area, but nonetheless, um, again, I'm pretty pleased with the nighttime footage. Um, here is the daytime clip as well. And again, it looks pretty good overall, uh, for a five megapixel camera. I think this does a pretty good job. This camera was about 85 bucks on Amcrest's website. Um, it was significantly cheaper on Amazon. It was closer to about 70 bucks. So if you are interested in this camera, you definitely want to pick it up from Amazon. Now, I was unable to get this thing added into Home Assistant. Now, I tried adding it via OnViv, and I kept getting a time error. I also tried adding it using the Amcrest integration, and it sounds like there's currently a bug with the latest firmware on Amcrest uh, and Home Assistant's uh, integration. Uh, so even though I was able to get the camera added, it just kept shutting the feed on and off. It wouldn't stay on all the time, so it didn't look like it was going to work. I searched online for a little while trying to see if I could fix it, and it looks like it seems to be a known issue uh, that has not been resolved. So if you're looking to add it into Home Assistant, this camera may not be for you, or you will just have to be willing to wait till they get that integration fixed and working properly with the latest firmware. Nonetheless. Um, for the price, I mean, I think it's a pretty decent camera. We were able to get it added to our Hikvision MVR using OnViv without any issues whatsoever. Um, it went very seamless, so I was pretty pleased with that. Nonetheless, if you're not interested in this particular camera, I'll have links to Amcrest website as well as their Amazon storefront in the description below. Head over there and check them out for yourself. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me a Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, head over to my spring merchandise page and check out all of the Burns Home Automation merchandise. And if you're looking for the latest smart home gear, you're going to want to check out Smonet. I'll have a link in the description below. Head over there and see what deals they currently have going. If you're looking for the latest smart window treatment, you're going to want to check out Smart Wings. I'll have a link in the description below for them as well. Head over there and see what deals they currently have going. If you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, you're going to want to check out Robinhood. If you sign up with the link in the description, you and I both will get a free share of stock. It's a win-win for both of us. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. If there are any videos out there that you haven't seen, that you would like to see, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.